Hey, what's going on everyone? Adam the Tutor here, coming at you with another Laplace transform problem. And this one is going to be what's known as the second shifting theorem. Alright, so second shifting theorem. Alright, and basically what's going on here is we're we're looking at what happens when you shift the Laplace transform in the T domain by an amount A, right? So essentially what's going to happen, first of all, well, first things first, is we kind of have to understand what's going on with this lower bound here. Now what's, what, what is going on there? Well, basically... When, when you're using the Laplace transform, typically you're dealing with systems that begin at time t is equal to zero, right? So, you know, I don't know, maybe you've got a function, you know, it's doing, you know, so it's like a kind of like a cosine function or something like that. I know that's a horrible looking cosine function, but so, you know, and, you know, before zero, this function is zero, so, you know, here f of t is zero, but here f of t, you know, isn't, you know, necessarily, or here maybe better, I should say, f of t isn't always zero. Well, it, it could be, uh, you know, here, let's just say this. Let's just assume that it's not zero, right? Because that's not a very interesting case. So here, f of t isn't zero, but when t is less than zero, it is zero. When t is greater than or equal to zero, it's not zero, right? So now what we're talking about doing is we're talking about saying, hey, okay, so, you know, this function, let me go ahead and do it in red, so now what we want to do is we want to shift the function by an amount a, right? So basically, this is t is equal to a, right? And because it's minus, it goes to the right, right? So now, you know, now we're doing something like this, right? So it's the same function, but now it's beginning at time t is equal to a instead of t is equal to zero, right? So, well, what does that mean? Well, that means in our Laplace transform, right, we start out with this, right? So z, you know, zero, infinity, f of t, e to the minus st dt. And what we're going to do then is we're going to say, hey, you know, now we're doing t, or t goes from t to t minus a. And in order to do that, in order to do that, our original function has to get multiplied so our original multi our original function has to get multiplied by a unit step function t minus a in addition to getting it to getting shifted in the time domain. So what does that look like? Well, so now what ends up happening is we get that the Laplace transform. mu of t minus a, f of t minus a, is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of mu of t minus a, f of t minus a, oh, well, didn't mean to write a there, I meant to write a minus sign there, there we go minus a, e to the minus s, but remember, we're shifting t by a, right? That was the whole point of this. 
so t minus a in the exponential, and dt remains the same, right? Because if I have t, not t is equal to a, if I have t minus a, t minus a, and, you know, I take a differential of that, well, a is a constant, t varies, so that's just dt minus zero, right? Which is just dt, dt, right? So at this point now, what we need to do is we need to we need to, to figure out, okay, well, what happens here, right? Basically, what this says is that the Laplace transform of this guy is going to be zero until t is greater than or equal to a, right? So basically, we can cut out the zero right here and replace it with a, right? Because it's just going to be zero anyway, right? That's not very, it's not very interesting. So when this is a, this guy becomes one. So then we just have f of t minus a e to the minus st times e to the plus a t dt, right? So at this point, what we want to do now is we're going to factor out this e and think, no, this should be s right here. I'm sorry. I messed up a little bit. That should be an s right there. That t that I just erased should be an s. Right? So it'll be e to the a s times the integral of a infinity f of t minus a e to the minus t dt. And if you'll notice right here, this is just a function of s, right? This is just the Laplace transform. So then we have that this is equal to e to the a s times a function of s, right? And this is the Laplace transform of this guy right here. And then do my little curly bracket. I know I kind of switched to blue there, but well, you know, it's all right. Okay. And so that is basically the second shifting theorem. And that's not supposed to be a nine. That's supposed to be an A. Try to give it a little bit bigger of a tail. There we go. Okay. So that is basically going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, just drop it in the comments section below and I'll do my best to address them. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.